This one is for the drivers. Here we have two lightweight rear wheel drive manual sports cars without a turbo, supercharger or hybrid system in sight. And both are designed to put a huge smile on your face. But which does it best? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and like the video and subscribe to the Car Sales channel while you're at it. The back to basic sports car concept isn't as popular as it once was, but in a way it's more relevant than ever. In the blue corner we have the new Subaru BRZ in Coupe S manual guys, and in the grey corner there's the Mazda MX-5. Here is a base model manual for which you'll save around $4,000 compared to the Subaru. Both are covered by 5 year unlimited kilometre warranties and 5 years of cap price servicing. The Mazda is a little bit cheaper to service but also has shorter intervals. Whether or not the new BRZ is good looking will be up to your personal taste, but it's definitely a more stylish and aggressive car than its predecessor. Wheels are 18s wrapped in 21540 Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres, and behind them we've got two 94mm discs and two piston calipers at the front, two 90mm discs and single piston calipers at the rear. One thing to note is that using aluminium rather than steel for the front guards and roof does save weight and lowers the centre of gravity, the new BRZ weighing 249 kilograms tear or around 1300 kilograms with a full tank of fuel. When it comes to lightness though, the MX-5 is king. This Roadster weighs just 1058 kilograms. Mazda really went back to basics with the ND generation, shrink wrapping the car as much as possible. Wheels are an inch smaller than the BRZs and wear 205-45 Bridgestone Potenza tyres while brakes are 280mm discs and single piston calipers at both ends. Both cars have four cylinder engines, but whereas the BRZ is a 2.4 litre boxer, so the pistons go like this, the MX-5's 2 litre is much more conventional. The BRZ is much more powerful, but in terms of power to weight, there's very, very little in it, and both cars should do just under 6.5 seconds from 0 to 100 k's an hour. It's clear from in here that the new BRZ is an updated version of the old car. That's not such a bad thing as the driving position is pretty good, though I would like this wheel to come a little bit higher. All BRZs come with keyless entry and start, dual zone climate control, digital instruments and sports seats, while this S version adds heated seats and leather ultra suede trim instead of the basic cloth. The BRZ touchscreen infotainment is a fairly basic affair, a definite improvement over what came before, but not exactly cutting edge. The new digital instruments are pretty cool though, with a couple of different display modes and a design that evokes the BRZ's boxer engine. As you might expect from the exterior dimensions, the interior of the NX5 is relatively snug. In fact, if you're somewhat of larger stature, whether height or width, you're probably not going to fit in here. That said, Mazda has done what it can within these confines with a storage area behind the rear seats and these cup holders, one of which fits down there, and the other one just clips in there. Thankfully, the wheel is now adjustable for both height and reach, but this being the base model, you do miss out on some niceties. The seats are cloth and not heated, there's no keyless entry, and there are only six speakers instead of nine. On the plus side, that's less weight. The MX-5's 7-inch touchscreen infotainment isn't actually touchscreen when you're on the move, which is pretty annoying. When you're driving, you have to use this dial, which is actually far more distracting. Overall, both these cars offer the basics, and let's be honest, you're probably using smartphone mirroring most of the time anyway, but if you're looking for the latest tech, you're out of luck. When it comes to safety, the Mazda is well catered for, including all the basics, as well as traffic sign recognition and auto emergency braking in both forward and reverse. However, the BRZ manual, like the WRX manual, misses out on virtually all of Subaru's EyeSight active safety equipment, most importantly, auto emergency braking. Only automatic buyers receive these features. The BRZ does have back seats with Isofix for baby seats, but you're gonna struggle to actually fit anyone back there. So you're better off folding the backrest down and expanding the boot. The boot is a bit compromised by the spare wheel, but on the plus side, it's a full-size alloy spare. You're also going to need to pack light in the MX-5, the 130-litre boot big enough for a couple of soft bags, but little else. But now we'll get to the crux of the matter. Which of these two sports cars is the best to drive? And for that, we'll start in the BRZ.
You know when you make a recipe for the first time, you usually stuff it up somewhere. You skip a step, you get a measurement wrong, and subsequently, while it might still taste pretty good, it's not as good as it could be. That was the first generation 86 and BRZ. I absolutely love them, but that doesn't mean they weren't flawed. And weirdly for a sports car, most of the flaws were in the driving. The engine was dead set ordinary. Had this massive hole in the torque curve, so while it felt okay at low RPM, had no mid-range, so you had to rev the ring out of it to get anywhere. The gearbox could be a pain when it was cold, and while the handling was in general great, it was set up to fall into oversteer under load, which was meant to make it fun, but could make it feel quite nervous. Anyway, the point is that this new generation BRZ is the second attempt at the recipe, and thus, pretty much all the shortcomings have been rectified. The engine is a massive improvement. Look, it's still not gonna go down as an old timer, but not only is there more power, it's delivered smoothly and it gets stronger as you approach redline. The biggest change though is the flexibility. You can now just press the throttle to go rather than always having to shuffle down a gear or two. This is helpful on a spirited drive, but transforms the experience when just cruising in traffic. Combine this with a slicker gear shift and genuinely compliant ride, and the BRZ is a great daily, with one very large exception. This is one of the noisiest cars I've ever driven. To be honest, this isn't something I usually ever notice, just turn the music up a bit. But if you're at any sort of speed, it's like driving along with a seashell clasped over each ear. Thankfully, the BRZ is so good to drive that you can easily forgive it. A lot of the bits have been carried over from the previous car, but the combination of the stiffer body, suspension tweaks, and those Pilot Sport tyres make it a much more serious proposition. There's a lot more grip and traction, so you can drive the car harder with greater confidence. The flip side to that is you have to drive the car harder for it to come alive and do all those 86 BRZ things. I suspect that the BRZ would be utterly brilliant on track, but it's fantastic fun on the road too, but is it better than the MX-5? I'm not sure, and that's a problem because that's the entire point of this video, to answer that very question. In fact, they're so close that I'm trying to avoid one of those awful sitting on the fence, it depends what you like verdicts. The Mazda has a better engine. I've seen a couple of people recently complain that the MX-5's two litre is nothing special, but I'm not really sure what more you could want from it. It's flexible, though having only around 1100 kilos to move helps. It makes a better sound than the Subaru, and it revs harder too pulling strongly well into the red zone. At higher speeds, the power deficit begins to show and the BRZ gets the upper hand, but the MX-5 is by no means slow and has one of the best manual gearboxes you will ever try. So that's one point just to the Mazda. As you can probably hear, being a soft top means the MX-5 is even noisier than the BRZ, though it's mostly wind noise rather than just road noise. It rides firmer too, though is still perfectly acceptable. Where it gets really tricky to split these two is in terms of driving dynamics, which might sound strange given their mechanical similarities. If we return to the cake analogy, the BRZ and MX-5 are the same type of cake, but different flavours. And that's the crux of the issue. Is vanilla better than chocolate? Well, depends what you like. The BRZ is pretty straightforward. Now it's got decent tyres and drives pretty much how you'd expect a sports car to drive. Agile, hunkered down and grippy. The MX-5 is basically the opposite. For this latest generation, Mazda altered the recipe and made it quite soft. So it pitches and it dives and it rolls. The benefit of this is that you're always feeling involved. The downside of the BRZ's greater composure is that you have to drive it harder to make it really feel like it's doing anything no such problems in the Mazda. Even at moderate speeds, it's moving around. The downside of the Mazda is that at higher speeds or on bumpier roads, it can feel a bit skittish, but in tighter corners, it is brilliant. As you build confidence, you can then use this body movement to your advantage, adjusting the car mid-corner using the pedals as well as the steering wheel. It's the pure essence of driving, though it won't be for everyone. There will be those who wish for a little more stability. In an effort to appease these people, this latest MX-5 has something called kinematic posture control, which keeps the rear end more stable. Though to be honest, it's something you feel a lot more on track than on the road. 
can watch a video all about it elsewhere on this channel. Regardless of which flavour of cake, sorry, sports car you prefer, both these cars are winners. I mentioned at the top that they're more relevant than ever, and that's because they're an antidote to the majority of cars that keep getting faster and more powerful and heavier. Both are fun at sensible speeds, and while, yes, both are exclusively petrol powered, you have to work pretty hard to even approach 10 litres per 100k in either, especially the featherweight Mazda. They're light on consumables too. The MX-5 also has the trump card of being able to drop the top in a flash should the mood take you. It is a fantastic sports car. But it's the BRZ that gets the win. Partly because it's the easier car to recommend with more space and greater comfort. But crucially, it is the better car to drive. Faster, yes, but also more confidence, inspiring and controllable. Long may it live. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the Car Sales channel and leave a comment down below with the cars you'd like to see us review.